Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for more Italy speaking. Today I want to go through an area which I haven't covered in full details inside the um, Scalar 2, which is the contextual pop-up menu, which you bring up pressing on the shift key, which is at the bottom left of the screen. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm inside the AUM. I have loaded the scalar 2 and I'm going to use the internal instrument. So I'm going to leave everything as default. Now let's go to scale and um, why not? Let's select something like um, a C minor chord. And there it is. We selected the C minor scale and we drag and drop the C minor tri triad to the progression builder. There you are. Okay, and as you can see, just uh, a normal triad, C2 and E flat 2 and uh, A G2. Now, if you press the shift key, you see uh, there is a, um, a surrounding uh, frames, um, a border around uh, patterns, but also around uh, the chord themselves. So let's start with the pattern. So let's say that uh, I click on the pattern number one, I will have an option to remove it, but as it is only one pattern, it doesn't allow me to do that. Clear it, detect it, which will move the detection of that C minor up here on section A. Let's repeat the process. I can duplicate that pattern. So I have now pattern two, and what you see that pattern two is a copy of pattern one, but it has also added the rests to the entire, um, the remaining part of that uh, uh, code progression, okay? Shift again on pattern one, we can edit. When you go on edit, we can give it a name, of course. And then shift again, pattern, you have this create command mapping, which allows you to navigate to pattern one, and I will create a separate tutorial for that. Okay, so, but you have additional options as well. If you click on the chord itself, you have a much bigger menu. So the first one is edit chord. You click on it and it moves you to the edit chord uh, uh, screen. This is where you can add your chord. So let's, for example, remove that uh, E uh, flat two and move it up to open up a little bit of the chord. Okay. Nice. Let's go back to the main menu, shift again on the chord. You can remove it, of course. You can replace it by a rest, which rest is practically will not play. Now, let me um, start again. And let's have a, a clear state again. And let's choose again a C minor um, scale. So C minor, like so. Enter and remove that and, and drag that C minor triad again. Shift and pattern one, let's edit that and let's call these um, um, P1, okay? And um, then what we're going to do is uh, um, shift on the chord again, and we're going to say add to, and it will say add to the current pattern or to a new pattern. Let's select a new pattern. So as you can see, it has created a new pattern with the same chord because the that was the one which I selected and I, and I selected from the pop-up menu to add that chord to a new pattern. So now I can click shift on pattern number two, edit again, and then give it a name of P2 like so, and then press okay. Right, so I have exactly the same one as well. Now, let's open it up again. Let's go edit that chord. So we're going to edit that chord and we're going to move up that E flat two to E flat three. Let's go back to the main. And I'll explain that in a moment why I've done that. Of course, that is on P2. So P1 still have the closed chord and P2 will have the open chord or a version of the open chord. Okay, so let's continue on the context menu. So you can add to a current pattern, to a new pattern, or to a specific pattern. And here we'll show you a the list of patterns which you have available, and you can add that code to the pattern that you like. Or you can, uh, uh, for example, replace the current pattern. Now, other options that um, we have seen previously is voicing, which is really interesting. So let's stay on P2. And um, let's remove the context pop-up menu. So we have that uh, 
a C minor chord in that position. So let's drag a D, uh, one, why not, and um, F minor. Now, shift on the C minor, okay, and let's go to voicing, and let's say extract voicing. Now, if I press on, on F minor, it's a closed chord. If I go to shift and press the F minor, and then I go to voicing, and then I say apply voicing, look what happens. Let's move that third, that A flat up an octave, similar to what you have in the C minor um, chord, the previous one. So that is how you actually extract um, voicing, and of course, you can apply voicing. Next, you have an option to play back performances. So if you have performances which are applied, if you remember through the sequencer, you can add a performance you can create a group like so so for example you can say legato on the first one on the second one uh, we are going to group two and uh, we're going to say we're going to have uh, an arpeggio like so for the second chord right so if i go to the second chord now which has an arpeggio again sequence of the first one as a legato the second one as an arpeggio so if i go to the second chord that f minor which has an arpeggio, shift and I click on that chord, playback performances, copy playback performance, shift on C minor, and then playback performances, and then paste playback performances, and I can do it to global as well, okay? So if I go back to sequencer now, you can see the arpeggio has been applied to uh, practically to, to the first chord, practically it has removed group one and is using only group two, which makes kind of sense. Other things that you can do on chords themselves, uh, you can substitute them. So with common um, tones, and you can go by median or submedian. So let's analyze that C. Uh, let's go back actually to um, that first pattern, P1, that C minor chord, a normal triad. The triad is an E flat 2, shift, C minor, substitution, common tones, and we go by median, which is the third, and we're going to say, and replace with the E flat or D sharp major. There you go, and there you have it. And that is what he has done. And of course, you can also substitute by um, instead of tonic, you can go by submedium, which is the six as well. Or you can have a modal interchanges as well. So, for example, let's uh, drag again that C minor, like so. And then uh, substitution, modal interchanges, let's have a seventh, and it gives you the combination available. C minus seven, there you are. So it becomes really handy to actually create the code as you like in terms of substitution. Next, you have um, uh, another menu. If you click the text again, it will move it up here on section A. It's pretty straightforward. Then you can add to the selection. If you have multiple chords selected, you can add that one to the selection. You can preview the code. It will just play. You can copy the code names to, to the clipboard. And you can explore, explore different scales. So again, let me uh, start with a clear state. Again, let's go for uh, a C minor again. And then let's select the C minor scale and the C minor triad. So shift again on the code. Let's go to other. So if I say explore scale, and let's say that I go for uh, example E, okay. Um, and I actually why not? Let's go to for an F is easier to understand. And I say F minor scale. What will happen is it will bring up that F minor scale there. You click on it and you are on variation now. And it says dominancy because that is what uh, you had originally selected for the code. And it will show you that variation for that uh, uh, dominancy in the F minor scale. And of course, you can use the tonic F, which is correspond to the um, scale selected. And you can have all the different variation. Okay. Again, let's start with a clean state. Let's go to scale again. And let's choose again a C minor. And uh, this time, what I'm going to show you, shift, C minor chord, others, parallel, generate parallel harmony. And uh, this has been actually fixed in the latest release of Scalar 2, so now you can use it. See what happens. 
it will say this will clear your current progression continue yes or no yes and you can see is it has created pattern two and pattern three now to better understand that let's go to the pod um screen and as you can see it has chromatically moved after that uh, code which is based on simano and it goes up um uh, which is up the scale so uh, let me play it to you and uh, so you can hear what he has done so he has done uh, um it had it has generated parallel harmony using that same codes chromatically going up chromatically and let's make it fast let's go to code duration to alphabet play again So, so two full octaves. So really nice a function that you can use uh, to actually generate parallel harmony. So as you can see, you have lots of different options that you can uh, get from uh, um, the contextual pop-up menu. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye.